future generation. Gip and Brad have done a lot of tournament fishing in the past, and that helped this duo hone their skills. Yeah, like, like Gip said, we, we had to learn out of necessity. Fishing waters, we, you don't know. It's one thing going back to your spot every day, but trailering a boat a few hundred miles and jumping in the water blind, it's, you you got to learn quick if you want to succeed. But the tournament's for now in the past. Right now, my uh, tuna passion is up there. <laughs> you know, everyone says, don't ever try tuna fishing because you, you won't stop, but I think they're right. Some days you can do no wrong, and those little ones, we had that, that day out in the mud hole, and boy, how many 60, 80 pounders could you catch? You couldn't get a bait in the water without yeah. hooking up with an 80 pounder that was hiding under the boat. Your arms hurt. <laughs> And in 2008, they targeted giants. Uh, anywhere from eight to a, eight to maybe a dozen trips. Yeah, probably a dozen. Any kind of tuna is fun to catch. However, there's just something um, mystical about catching something that's, you know, four or five, six, eight hundred to a thousand pounds. That, you know, there's just not many of them out there nowadays. And what it takes to catch them, you know, it's like any other fish, I guess. That some days you can't do anything wrong. And that uh, we haven't experienced that day yet. <laughs> We're still waiting for that day. And then there's the other days where, uh, you know, you just work so hard for them, and there's so many tricks in the book, and we have so much to learn. It's just, uh, it's overwhelming. It's a new challenge. Earlier in 2008, Team Riggs hooked up. I did have one on, and uh, the fish decided to come to the boat rather quickly, and. Uh, <laughs> Probably our inexperience, the fish was a little too green when it was real close to the boat. And uh, we had thought we were actually going to get a good chance to stick the fish. Some fish, either they've been hooked before, or they either get lucky or they know what they're doing, because this fish went right for the motors. Fish one, us zero. <laughs> you talk about what we could have done and should have done for the next year. <laughs> relive it a few, few oh, we relive thousand it, times. Yeah, a lot. If only we... Yeah go to bed at night, it creeps up on you quite a bit. You never lose the small ones. <laughs> yeah. It's just how it goes. But they didn't give up, and early November they headed back off the Cape. You know, luckily we had heard about the bite and, um, and got out there, and sure enough, you know, all the heavy hitters, all the high hookers were there. And when you see some of those boats, you, you know you're in the right spot. And. Um, you know, sure enough, I mean, by the time we got there, a lot of boats already had one or two fish tail wrapped and hanging off the side of the, the boat. And, you know, they weren't small fish in there either. They were all over seven, 600 pounds. Most of them were between eight and a thousand. Epic. Yeah. 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 Best it's, you know, I think it was the best tuna bite they had in at least 10 or 15 years yeah. for a good almost two weeks. And they landed a 747 pound giant but getting it back to the dock proved to be a challenge. It was a little sporty to say the least. Um, we had no, knew the weather was going to turn for the worst. The weather had started to turn. But they made it back. Nothing that size expected on this day, but hey, anything is possible. Fish there hunt. Is. It's going in the right direction. Bigger fish in this spot seem to know where the high points are and uh, boy it's funny it seems like when you when you do get a good fish they'll go right for that high point and they, whether they feel that that pressure on their mouth and they know enough to get down into the rocks and try to rub it off and uh, that's a lot of times how you, you get broke broken off out here and it happens yeah, it happens, happens a little bit I'm not sure if it's instinct or they're really that smart but they definitely go they for that go down for the rocks and try to rub it off Use the boat if you have to. Yeah. And that's really all you can do is, is get them in the deeper water. Just got some fighting them. Getting better. I was just saying. Yeah. Building up. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice healthy fish. I'll live for another day. Maybe he'll be a 50 next year. Yeah. <laughs> or more like five I, years. I was gonna say, <laughs> I'm a firm believer that they can hear you know, in 25, 30 feet of water, they hear this boat. They hear the, the you know, the pounding, the stepping around. And, uh, you know, a lot of times in here, we won't hook a fish right under the boat. So with this spinning gear set up, you can get it out away from them. And, um, 
and get it to nice flow down naturally and, and kind of go along with the tide. And that's what's important here. Um, at nighttime, uh, different story. It's a little bit different. And a lot of times you can get them to you know, three-way in here with a three-way setup in 25 to 30 feet of water. There he is. Ooh. Nah, the that's, bottom or that's that? bottom. Those rockfish get really yeah, big around here. Unbelievable rockfish. <laughs> Set the hook good. Yeah. There you go. Fish on. Fish on. Yep, also to likes to play with great whites. My best friend is a uh, captain on a, a large yacht in the West Coast. And uh, I get to do a few trips a year anyways to uh, help move it from point A to point B. And this trip was from San Diego down to Cabo, which doesn't get much better than that, especially that time of year. Let us take the boat out to Guadalupe Island off the coast of Mexico, northern Baja, and uh, spend a couple days there just to see if we could actually find them and, and play with them. And it's been, you know, I was one of those kids that once Shark Week was on in the summertime, you know, you couldn't get my, you could, couldn't get me away from it. I was just glued to it. So we get out there and uh, the water was cool for that time of year. And we didn't think the tuna were still around. Uh, it's a great tuna spot. Lo and behold, we uh, were trolling some live bait out of a 15 foot inflatable and uh, ended up hooking up with a couple of 140, 150 pound yellowfin on small 30 outfits. At that point we didn't see any sharks yet so we didn't know if they were really around. So we took them back to the boat and, and carved them up and uh, that's all it took. We just needed something big enough for the sharks to come up but they didn't, uh, they didn't show themselves until we actually threw a, a tuna carcass or a head or a very expensive loin out there. <laughs> and uh, once they started coming, it was uh, non-stop. We had at least five, maybe six different um, very large great white sharks around the boat. The only proportion I can say is, is they were the size of Jaws. I mean, <laughs> all at 20 to 25 feet, have no problem swallowing you whole. And, you know, for a couple of young guys to play with something that was so agile and, and destructive force was just absolutely the most incredible thing. One of the best trips I've been on in a lifetime. Well, you just feet on them, right? Literally feet. I mean, we could, uh, I have one picture of my friend uh, Kenny's hand literally touching his back. Tenfold on how agile you think they are. Um, they can turn on a dime. Uh, they can be facing that direction and, and be facing this direction in literally a blink of an eye. And uh, just an amazing thing and a, amazing, powerful, powerful fish. But this day, right past the goal. How about a 40 pounder? We'll see when fishing the Ocean State returns. Yeah, he's got some shoulders on him. <laughs> <laughs>